In November of 2018, Bishop Morlino of Madison, Wisconsin passed away, but his legacy lives on. I just recently stumbled upon some of his letters, and they are really good. The one I want to focus on today is one about beauty in the liturgy. In his letter from 2011, he talks about acceptable liturgical music, and I'm going to read some excerpts. The fact that our parish likes to sing a particular song at the liturgy cannot of itself make that song beautiful. To be beautiful indeed is to be good as is to be true. As much as some people may enjoy the musical antics of Lady Gaga, these cannot honestly be described as beautiful. Beautiful means in the first place embodying the truth. Some of the songs that we sing at liturgy contain lyrics which are clearly not true. For example, the song All Are Welcome. As a matter of fact, the liturgy takes place mystically in the heavenly sanctuary. All are welcome at the liturgy who truly seek salvation in and through Jesus Christ by following God's will, as spelled out through his Son's very body of the church. People who have little interest in doing God's will don't fit at the liturgy. Thus the song All Are Welcome gives an impression that the choice for the will of Jesus Christ as it comes through the church makes no difference, and nothing could be further from the truth. I'm not particularly a fan of the song All Are Welcome, and neither is Bishop Marlino. And he makes it very clear in this letter that it is not acceptable for liturgy. It is interesting because the writer of the song isn't even Catholic. The songwriter is Marty Haugen, and he is a member of the Church of Christ, a Protestant denomination. I found an article of an interview with Marty Haugen, and it is really interesting. I'm going to read you some excerpts. In this interview, Marty Haugen says, A chaplain suggested that I apply for a Catholic church job. I said I didn't know anything about the Catholic liturgy, and he said, well, these days, nobody does. You'll feel right at home. And he was right. What I learned was that when you are in chaos, you ask some fundamental questions that you don't ask when things are going well. After the Second Vatican Council, Roman Catholics were asking things like, what does it mean to gather? How do we sing the Psalms? How do we sing when we go to communion? I think the Spirit moves through questions and discussions and struggles like those. The interviewer asks Marty Haugen if he had more freedom in the Catholic Church than he did in Protestant churches, and he said, yes, I do think so. In my early 20s, like many musicians and also priests who had been ordained right after the Second Vatican Council, we were young and enthusiastic and not that far from the 60s. We still had this vision that the world could be changed and that institutions could be radically changed. If the cardinals and bishops had understood the implications of what they were unleashing, they might not have made all the changes. 